Nigeria is a predominantly black nation. So for many, the need to have a Black History Month is not a high priority. The only relevance it will have is to ensure that whatever celebration that is taking place over there has some meanings back home. But for others, especially those who have traveled and lived abroad, having racial awareness is necessary. These Nigerians here are reflecting on their experiences of being identified as black when they went west. When did you first realize you are black? Wow, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. I don't think I ne ever thought of it as a thing. Like, I, I, I've always known that I was a human being first. I think the first time I started being conscious of, or being aware of my difference from other races was probably in my adult years. I think I was um, about six, because I had some, I think I had one Indian Negro and then two Americans. So the color contrast. So when I went to the UK, there was a time that I went to a store in Harrods, and the way they treated me was a bit different. And there are always different experiences. I've suffered more racism in Nigeria than I have in, in the UK. <laughs> and now that they've returned, they see a need for black history to be taught and celebrated in the country. Like, I know that there is an importance for understanding black history, especially for Nigerians who want to live overseas. But taking one month to celebrate black history might not be enough. Black history, I mean, <clears throat> it's such a broad term, number one. Number two, in the schools in Nigeria, do they teach black history? You learn about European history. So what is black history? Some young people who have yet to go abroad have an idea of what Black History Month is about, though they aren't entirely familiar with the concept. It's about like those legends that have passed through like racism because of their skin color. Um, I think Black History Month is the month that we celebrate Black History about our forefathers that came from countries that only have black people. As you can see, many people are still new to this whole idea of Black History Month and also the need to celebrate black history, even though they see that there's a value to it. So it might be best to start at the root of exactly what Black History Month is all about. 2022 marks the 96th year that African people around the world have celebrated Black History Month. Established by Dr. Carter G. Woodson in 1926, this idea spread. Dr. Carter G. Woodson wanted us to consider five questions. Dr. Woodson asked us to, number one, consider if we are freer today than we were. Number two, Dr. Woodson wanted us to look at our spiritual institutions, our mosques, our churches, our synagogues, our traditional African religious sites, and ask, are they a greater spiritual force than they were? Number three, Dr. Woodson asked us to look at how we've obtained in the realm of education, not just how many degrees we've accrued, but are we using that education in a way to build a more just world? Number four, Dr. Woodson asked us to consider the state of wealth in the African world. Where are we economically? And lastly, Dr. Woodson wanted us to look at our media, our literature. Have we created outlets for black people to express their joy, their pain, their longing, their achievements? On the, on the ground, spiritual game. Some schools in Nigeria are making it a point to celebrate Black History Month. Take these students here. They're drawing self-portraits as a way to celebrate themselves while stating what they like about Black History Month. In a world where blackness is not always valued, building one's self-esteem may be a good place to start. I like my different colors. I like my hair. I like my drawing. What do you like about your hair? Uh, it's black. How many people here like their hair? Amen. The educators at the school see a need to teach black history and believe it belongs in the classroom. Why do you think Black History Month is important and do you think it's relevant to the everyday experience of Nigerians? We're black. <laughs> Honestly, that's all I can say. I think we're black. It's part of us. We cannot erase it. You cannot say 
because you don't feel connected to the blackness. You do not want to celebrate this tremendous um, movement. It's a time where we honor those who has served in the black community, like Chimamanda Adichie, um, Malcolm X. A lot of students have lost the concept of black history, and you'll find that a lot of American textbooks don't also carry that in the curriculum. William, a parent in Nigeria who has moved back from the U.S., wants his children to have a better understanding of the contributions and legacies of black people at home and abroad. History reminds us of where we came from, um, but also it reminds us of where we are, where we're standing, and helps us actually see the future and prepare ourselves for the future. I think it's important for me, being a, a, a father of two beautiful Nigerian Americans, I think it's essential that they know um, where their ancestors came from. Black History Month in Nigeria is a concept that is still catching on and ideas around belonging to a global black community are as diverse as the 200 million plus people living in the nation. But the conversation has to start somewhere, and people are talking. Itoro Udafia, Arise News. Thank you so much, Itoro, for that report. Well, for more on this, let's bring in policy analyst Chime Asoye and Professor Abiodun Adeni, Arise News Analyst and Head of Mass Communications at the Bayes University. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me. Well, I guess it's still in order to say happy Black History Month. It's still February. But like Itoro highlighted in that report, the conversation needs to start, especially in places like Nigeria, where we are not so much accustomed to the relevance of this month. Let me start with you, Professor Abiodun. Adeni, why is this month so important? Is it all about celebrating the achievements of black people or uh, or is it more than that? And I mean, it's it's come a long way from mm -hmm. the father of black history himself, right. Kata G. Woodson. Mm -hmm. Do you think it has changed the imbalance we've seen in society? Has there been any point to black history month? Well, uh, that's a very complex one. Um, there can't uh, be end to discrimination, really. And in every system and society, you see different levels of classification. Um, even in the same society where the phenotypes are similar, where they are essentially of the same color, you see discrimination on the basis of gender, on the basis of um, income, on the basis of tribe, or ethnicity, and all of that, you know. So but if you transpose it to race, you also see that there are levels of discrimination. Mm -hmm. There are different w ways in the, from the global sphere around which we can classify people in terms of color. But the black race has been especially inferiorized because of what happened to our history, and that is slavery. You know, slavery, of course, it was a solo state, very dehumanizing, and it's been very difficult to deconstruct that part, mm -hmm. you know, from the, from the type, from the, from the typecasting of blackness. You know, but of course, humanity isn't really different. Our biologies may be slightly different, but in terms of capacity and ability, we we'll have the same potentials. And of course, we've seen over the years, you know, African Americans trying to, black Americans trying to rewrite that history of inferiorization through the demonstration of their capacities, their abilities, even up to the discourse around uh, black history. Well, there are, co it, there, are, there are controversies around it, you know, whether or not it's actually worth celebrating. But within the context of their own society, you may say, well, it, it, it's symbolic, really. Mm -hmm. It's symbolic in the sense that it just raises their self-esteem for a moment, boosts their ego, adds to their prestige, and probably encourages them for the future. But it's not something that is salutary, because we have seen development in history, political history of America, that has rewritten the concept of blackness. With Obama emerging as president, for instance, with Colin uh, Poe, Powell's um, achievements, you know, as the first chairman of joint, a uh, U.S. Joint Chief of Staff, and so many other feats that blacks have achieved in music, in, entertain, in, in entertainment, etc., etc. Mm. At, at, at some point in the, in, in the future, I think the importance of, or the purpose, you know, the value of that celebration will begin to wit with that, will begin to get, get with you that as the case could be. But in our own case, we probably may not be reminded of it, we may probably may not have mm -hmm. a need for it, because we exist within the same federal Type. And we are reminded only of our difference when we um, when we travel out or when we yeah. live outside. You know when we mix with other uh, races. You know, but that's not to say that um, in terms of racial discrimination or racial classification, the black race appears to be the most disadvantaged 
And oftentimes, from sociological calculation, the blacker you are, the more disadvantaged you are mm -hmm. in war calculation. And that's why the Caucasians are high up there, followed by the Mongols, and to some extent, uh, the blacks. But how do we deal with this? I think we're, yeah, we're, we'll we're get, gradually we'll dealing, that. dealing with that, you know, through the rise of blackness, mm -hmm. the rise of black achiev uh, achievers. Yes. Obama is cited example. And Kamala Messi Harris. Malena, so I'd like to Kamala add Harris, to that, yes, partner, yes, 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 the Vice right. President of the United States. Mm -hmm. But let me come to you, Chisom. Uh, do you think that we are learning more about our history, uh, despite having this month to celebrate achievements and, and correct some of the imbalance that, that we have? Are we learning about history at all? Nigeria does not have a dedicated month to learn about its history. Mm -hmm. Even in October, which is our independence, we don't really think about the lost historical legacies. We don't think about um, the impacts of different uh, major movements that built. So let's let's think about what Black History Month is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's a month to honor the sacrifices and the contributions of African Americans to the American project and also the triumphs and history of that. That is not just an American story. That's a story that is also important to black global consciousness, right? And we've seen countries around the world make Black History Month theirs. In the UK, in 1980s, they originally started by honoring Black History Month as an American holiday, but they evolved. Now it has to do with black British Americans, I mean, black British, and it also has to evolve even further to Africans and Caribbeans, et cetera. We've seen it in Canada, where it began as American holiday, but a, a Canadian American, a Canadian parliamentarian said that in 1995, we want to make this about Canadians. So we can make localize it yeah. and we can make black history something important um, in our context. And I think that we forget sometimes we think about it as a race issue and because we have just black people here, but there's tribalism that exists mm -hmm. in the country, and we have a history of colonialism that continues to impact what has happened in um, Nigeria today. Mental health is a good example. I also work very prominently in the mental health field. We've seen um, um, right now Nigeria has a colonial mental health policy that was started during British colonial times, right, called the Lunacy Act. And um, there is a bill sitting at the presidency desk that would change that, right? If we understand our history and how this colonial history has impacted us, we would understand that we need to really appeal and change what we have going on right now. So we need to localize the conversation. We need to talk about the economic and the rights that people in this country have made and strides mm -hmm. and understand that it's not just about American holiday, but it's really about global consciousness about the contributions that we've made in this society. Interesting. Professor Abiodun Adini, it's difficult to relate to what you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the how, because, you know, we do agree that not enough has been done at the moment. Mm -hmm. People do not understand the relevance of this day enough. Uh, maybe yeah. they have, they know about it, but they don't understand the relevance enough. So how do we do this? Because I know you've done a lot of research on Nigerians and diaspora, mm -hmm. and uh, the shock that comes with entering a different culture right. for anyone. Mm -hmm. So how do we go about this? Well, that's another very uh, 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 tough one. I think it's a process, really. It's not mm -hmm. something you can do, maybe through the application of the magic bullet. Do not forget that we have suffered some kind of um, demonization in history, so we are still, it's still taking us time. Our economy has been, our progress has been retarded. Our cultures dismantled. So many things happened, you know, that weren't really in our favor, you know. So it, it's, it is taking time for us to recover, and of course. Be maybe because of some lethargy le of leadership, le laziness in thinking, uh, leadership, you know, across mm -hmm. the black race, you know, ha haven't also been helpful in terms of propelling us to the level in which uh, we're supposed to be. Rather, they are aping and idolizing those who rather uh, put us down. You know, so you can see the, a crisis of identification. So we are struggling to get out of uh, that identity. We are struggling mm -hmm. within it, and of course, it, it's going to be—it's going to take time. We might achieve it um, in the future, but not in the immediate circumstances where we are still, where we're still struggling with resources, struggling with struggling with leadership, mm -hmm. etc., etc. And that's why you see uh, migration to the Western world is something that has.
continued unabated. Now we are even seeing what I call the rush to Canada, which is going to continue because of the power states of our economy, not just the Nigerian economy, but African society, mm -hmm. uh, African societies general, uh, generally. And of course, by the time you go out there, you also see that, um, of course, we don't understand it. It mm -hmm. is trite wisdom that it's not about El Dorado, but returning also becomes very difficult because they find it difficult to replicate um, the conveniences of life that is available to them over there, right around us here. And that's why we're saying that living, fulfillment, is not just about the individual's acumen, the individual ability, but it also has a lot to do with the states, you know, who the individuals have surrendered their powers to, consistent with the Leviathan, as the case could be. So there's an identity crisis, Chisom. Yeah. How do we go about this? Chime. But, oh, sorry, uh, Chime. Big no problem. problem. Sorry, I'm sorry. The identity crisis is not something that is, um, it's something that's qualitative. There was a poll done by the American Polling Institute mm -hmm. in 2021, something called the National Social Cohesion Index, and it said that two things that I think are striking. The first one is 73% of Nigerians felt like if they had the opportunity to immigrate, they would leave. And um, the biggest reasons were for greener pastures or for better opportunities. Where would they want to go? United States was the top at 30%, and then afterwards was the UK. So there's something to be learned about mm -hmm. some of this migration crisis and what we have. And then the second key thing from that poll is that it said over 50, 56%, so that's over half of Nigerians, mm -hmm. believe that um, they are extremely or somewhat dissatisfied with their life in Nigeria, right? So. I, I say that to say that right now, Nigerians are not happy to be Nigerians, right? And so how do we help the project of Nigeria, which mm -hmm. is one to go back to the question of how do we localize this conversation? When we're talking about black history, we should be talking about black excellence, black triumph, black sacrifice. People in this country have sacrificed to where we've gone today. Mm -hmm. I could think about, I'm from Abia, and one of the biggest revolts in West Africa was the Aba women's protest, mm -hmm. right? where you had different ethnic groups come together, whether it's Ija um, or Efek, et cetera, and protest women's role in government, mm -hmm. and, or protest uh, warrant chiefs, or protest um, the courts, and un protest unfair taxation. That is something that should be taught in schools. Mm -hmm. That type of organizing, that type of cross-ethnic, um, cross-tribal, right, coalition building. I can give other examples. Well, um, in the documentary that you just gave, it talked about Fele Kuti. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about his mom. His mom, well, his mom, Familia Ransom Kuti, was a huge rights advocate. She helped with women's rights to vote. She helped with against arbitrary taxation. So talking about these individuals, learning from them, right, will help us organize and hopefully identify more about how we can make the Nigerian project better in the future. Okay, so can we rewrite history books uh, to reflect what we're talking about, the identity, resolve the identity crisis, and uh, ensure that we understand our history better? Is it about rewriting the history books, or uh, should we just teach history from the scratch, uh, mm. catching them when they're young? Does that help in any way? Well, yeah, it does. I think it has a lot to do with um, psychology, really, how mm -hmm. we build our minds and how we shape the minds of the young ones towards the future, you know. Um, if we're able to share them, maybe through our educational process, mm -hmm. letting them realize that there's nothing uh, innately wrong with their color, irrespective of how um, they have been classified or irrespective of how they have been identified. You know, if uh, their mentality, you know, it's um, rammed up in mm -hmm. terms of uh, boosting their self-esteem, uh, it can go a long way helping them. But mm -hmm. I don't want us to also believe about this issue. Because don't, don't forget what I said earlier, yeah. that in any system, at any point, in time, within space and time, there will always be discrimination. Yes. You can also equate equate this with gender, with feminist struggle, for instance. You know, the typical some women will also feel concerned that uh, they're not being f uh, well represented in the in the system, mm -hmm. and that's why they will have reasons to agitate. Yes. So you can equate equate it with that. You know, but within that circle of, so of also, we have seen women who have excelled. You know, in different areas, you know, just like we have seen blacks who have ex excelled in different areas. So the other, the flip side of this is to look away um, from these concerns about mm -hmm. color and just go ahead and demonstrate yourself, prove what yourself in terms of your ability, your capabilities, you know, and see yourself as just a being, you know. And of course, we have seen it in history how quite a number of blacks have been excellent. You know, so maybe uh, they may not be concerned about being celebrated. Whether or not you celebrate me, um, my, uh, my, my, my productivity mm. will compel you to celebrate me, irrespective of um, how you want to see me as. 
Do you agree? <laughs> How can I not agree with Prof? <laughs> I don't have to say anything. I just, I just say yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but is it enough to have just one month? The mm. 12, I mean, 12 months calendar year yeah. for black history. If this is so mm. important, why do we have just one month? Is that enough? Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I think you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's talk about act the U.S. Black History Month. U.S. Black History Month didn't start out as a month. It started off as a week when Carson Wilson did it um, and he created the Association for Negro History and Society. He did it as a week, but during the 1960s protests where there's civil rights struggle, it was a need to grow this conversation. Mm -hmm. So let's start it somewhere. Even if we started as Black History Week in Nigeria, where we're talking about the civil rights activists, we're talking about the Kenso Ariwas, mm -hmm. et cetera, the people who contributed to the nation building project. Let's start there. And I think that with our own local context, we can grow the conversation to a month out or we can grow it to to six months out etc like that but the point is we're not having the conversation in the first place mm. we are not talking about our history when we're we are now we are not talking about our history we are now. oh we're, we are history. now yes yes exactly we are yes. talking about it now and we need to have more of these conversations yeah. and as prof said we need to start these conversations with these young people at a more sustainable in, level, yeah. a sustainable level mm. and in our schools and make sure we develop the curriculum uh, to help support these conversations in the future and as we round off very quickly uh I mean, another February is coming. Mm -hmm. You've said this, this we need to do. What would you like to see by the time it's February uh, 2023? Professor yeah, uh, Danny, let me start with you. Yeah, maybe we should, should just see, um, we expect to see more focus, you mm -hmm. know, um, less of blacks being identified with crime and criminal acts, you know. And of course, if blacks can, you know, be conscious of these, avoid um, distracting, perverting the course of systems and society, we expect some le level of reciprocation too from the authorities, especially where they are, those authorities are peopled by non-blacks, whether Caucasians, okay. Mongoloids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. And you? I, I would like to see the contributions of history continue to be honored and history doesn't have to be something that's 100 years ago it could be something that is today we I can think create history we can, we, history. well people have created history yeah. the people who were sacrificed at Lucky Tollgate created history at that time the people who continue to protest um, for a better Nigeria create history the people who helped get the electoral act continue to create history those people lives need to be honored those stories need to be told and we need to create curriculum that continues to honor their legacy in the future that's a good place to leave it thank you so much policy analyst Chime Asoye and Professor Abiodun Adeni a rise news analyst and head of mass communications at the Bayes University thank you gentlemen for being here to discuss the black thank history you. months with thank us on their eyes on TV